Hey everyone, it's Amy, owner and curator of Yo So Boho. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, if you're a friend coming back, hello. Thank you so much for coming back. I am taking you to Pittsburgh today, Pittsburgh, PA. Um, Earth found a camping spot right near the city, a um, little bit outside of the city. And of course, while we were there, we wanted to hit some attractions and also go thrifting. You know me, I wanted to find some good places, um, even the Goodwills and Salvation Armies to check out. And on this trip tonight, I'm gonna take you to the Heinz History Center, which was an awesome place to visit, as well as a fleetik called Miller's Crossing Fleetik in Irwin, PA. So without further ado, let's go on an adventure. Lawrence County. to visit in downtown Pittsburgh was the Heinz History Center. There were floors full of history, but one floor designated to Heinz and all of the things that Heinz made. And man, will I be out looking for these jars and wooden boxes. Some Heinz chow chow. Walnut ketchup, chili sauce. Cranberry sauce, walnut ketchup. Oh, walnut ketchup, mince meat. Apple butter. Celery soup. Oh, celery sauce. Yeah. Look at the sky. The sun came out. Look at that sky. <laughs> Mr. Rogers was a favorite of both mine and of Earth's, and we were really tickled to kind of relive our childhoods through that exhibit. But there were also so many cool different displays. Check this one out and take a listen to how we interact in a museum. Oh, I'll take this collection. Well, yeah, I got a question. Yes. Even if I came home dressed as a clown, you don't even know it. I would probably murder you because I would be defending myself. <laughs> One of my favorite places that we spent time was in the visible storage area. Unbelievable things back here and all the information on what they were. This is so cool. All the information for what these things are. I could sit here all day. It's quiet. There's no kids up here. Look at all the doll furniture. And then it tells you what it is. It's so cool. That's Potato Pete. That duck is from 1926. So many great crocs here. Look at the tins. Just some really cool stuff in here that I would like to find when I'm hunting. I look at old electronics. I know you do. I love looking at this stuff. So those are made by Min Minton for Tiffany. And I was right about those. Those are Colport. And those could go right into my collection. It's an old Westinghouse. Transistor radios. Now I'm looking at the fans. Oh, oh fans, yeah, <laughs> that's right. And that uh, mixer is on my counter. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, the old radios are very cool. Look at all the uh, old coffee pots up there. Yep. There's Thank some you. with wooden handles and Bakelite, Bakelite handles. The Pittsburgh area of Pennsylvania is famous for glass and this history center has a great exhibit. You will find things from Jeanette, from Westmoreland, from McKee, from Consolidated. All of these glass companies were in this area and this Heinz History Center has a bunch of eye candy to look at. That's crazy cool. That's insane. If you go, be sure to take your black light. That one glows too. That's just like some of my, like I said. Ooh, that one glows too. That one looks like it was carved out of an iceberg. That one looks cool. Yeah. So does that one. Looks like it, it has that icy design. All sort of thing. Wow. A Reuben Haley design. That one probably glows too. That's a celery dish. Fun at the glass part of the museum when you have when you have a black light. Oh my gosh, what is that? That's a lamp. Oh my gosh. Foval lamp. Rare and delicate lamp is made from the same formula of glass as the meat platter. Oh, it's that. It's the meat platter. My key glass. It's kind of fun to be able to see what lights up. After Earth made some friends, we said goodbye to the Heinz History Center and we headed out to an antique mall. This one was in Irwin, PA. It was called Miller's Crossing and we had a nice look around in here. I turned my camera on in this booth first to share that this was originally $50 marked down to $20. That is an Avon piece that's worth maybe $5. <laughs> But I did spot these pieces, and I knew right away that these were Hall um, drip pieces. This is in the jade, and for 75 cents, that was a great deal. Some of you may know that I collect Hall, H-U-L-L, -L, brown drip pottery. This is also made by Hall. You can tell when it says this Oven Proof USA in that font. Um, not all of them say haul, but all of them will say something like this. So this is a haul. This is a green drip. It's jade green. They have another lighter green. Um, I do not collect the green. However, these are beautiful and for 75 cents each. I could not pass that up. I mean, my goodness, for $1.50, had to grab them. I do not run across the green very often. Um, I run across the brown a lot, but the other colors are getting harder and harder to find. So these nice little dessert bowls will be a nice addition either to the booth or I will check them out and maybe put them up on eBay. But definitely worth a grab for 75 cents each. There was so much glass here because we are in the area for glass. Lots of Westmoreland, lots of milk glass, and the prices here were surprisingly high, especially since they're probably easy to find around here. There were some interesting things here and some interesting prices. This little guy had a plastic bottom. <laughs> I did love the look of that, that geode um, cut through with the Ikebana um, flower frog in the bottom, but I was surprised to see the plastic bottom. These two things were decanter lids. Looked like they had a political type of thing. They were not in the best condition, but they were kind of neat. Oh, speaking of neat, check this out. This is a big piece that had all of these printer's trays. They were all kind of at an angle. 
It was made by Ludlow. I can't imagine how heavy this piece was. They wanted $350 for it and man, if I had the space, <laughs> that was such a neat thing. Lots of milk glass, like I said. These are all probably Westmoreland, all of that uh, lace, that open lace. I've sold a couple of pieces of that this booth was really cool because it had a lot of primitive things in it. Look at that mirror back there. And this, this big box up here, loved it. $50 was a bit much, but there's something about that old wood that just gets me. Speaking of gets me, East Lake style vanity, gorgeous. I'd love to uh, have space for that. That one even had a marble top as I'm noticing. It's funny, there was a lot of things as I'm looking back through what I recorded that I wish I would have taken a better look at. Um, this piece, the color on this, it was giving me Hager vibes. It was probably Hager. It's a good price at 16 and I don't know why I passed it up, but I did. This was a nice painted salt cellar. Loved that too. This salt glaze piece, this bowl is gorgeous. Great condition, super heavy. Lots of like primitive pottery in this booth right here. I loved this. This was like a jug or a bottle and it had some markings on it. I'm seeing these on eBay priced pretty high. This one was only $18, so I'm wondering if this was a miss on my part. Um, but I always say you can't look up everything and you can't buy everything. There was just some great pieces on these shelves in this booth. Probably one of my favorite booths. And I don't think I bought anything in here. So I don't know. Something was going on. <laughs> Love that little piece. I wonder if that one would have glowed. I did not check. But it reminded me of my crackle glass collection. Although it was just full of bubbles. And then here I'm like, do they know? Do they know? Yeah, they know. <laughs> It's a, it's a good price at $23. That is a Brush McCoy modeled ear vase. I love those modeled uh, glazes. This booth was another one that was full of pottery. These were more modern pieces, studio pieces, but they had great looks to them. That one right there was a cloche, which I've never seen a pottery cloche. It was neat. Some really pretty glazes. Love that dipped green one up there. And then out here again, we had some really pretty pieces. Loved this bamboo, like ladder type shelving um, piece here. That was neat. So you notice so far, I only have two little green bowls in my cart. And I'm seeing all this wonderful pottery. <laughs> And I haven't bought anything else yet, but that is about to change. got to be wrong with it, right? Why is it only $10? This was incredible. Incredible. $10. This was $10. Look at this beautiful hand thrown piece. It is stunning. The colors, the craftsmanship, just stunning. And yeah, $10. Maybe he forgot a zero. <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. And then down in here is a business card. It says pottery, obviously. <laughs> wheel thrown and hand built it's made by edward zamberzuski 
Zemberzewski. So pretty. And then it's signed on the bottom. Very nice, very nice. I can't imagine why it was in that booth for $10. I thought it has to be split down the middle or something. <laughs> this big guy, let me back out a little bit here. Um, probably my favorite thing of the entire trip to find in that booth. So glad we stopped in there. And oh yeah, we find another thing in this booth too that's pretty exciting. So let's go back and see. Look at this. It looks old, doesn't it? It does. How much do you want for it? 20 bucks. Can you make money on that? Um, I think so. I can't find anything like it. It has such a great old look to it. Um, these pieces of wood, you can tell the age here. Now, it seems like there may have been a marking, or maybe that's just, maybe that's just the way that the metal was built. I don't know. I'm not seeing any markings on the piece, but I can tell that it's old. It's nautical. It's cool. It still works. It spins, and I paid twenty dollars for it. I can't imagine um, not doubling or tripling my money on this. I just think it's way too cool looking, and we are located near Lake Erie, and I imagine somebody is going to see this and think, "Yeah, that's cool. I need that for my decor." It would sit on a shelf nicely. It would hang on the wall in a cool way. Um, yeah, it's just very neat. And that booth was my favorite booth between <laughs> these two things. I think I did well. After a little bit more research, I think this is going to go on eBay. I think I have something that's worth probably between a hundred and hundred and fifty dollars. If that last booth that I found that pottery in was my favorite, this came in a close second place. Checking out these ironwood uh, pieces here, they were very neat. But I did find several smalls in this space that I bought. So let's take a look at what's in here. Lots of amber back here. I do like amber, but this time of year, Maybe not so much, although this piece down here is catching my eye. It is a splatter piece, small little piece. Yeah, I'm gonna grab this. Y'all know I collect crackle glass. Well, this is not crackle glass, but man, do I like this. <laughs> this is a splatter glass. It is amber with a clear handle. I have had a couple splatter glass pieces before. And you can get them in such variations, just like the crackle glass. They did a lot of different colors and different styles and haven't decided yet if I'm going to set this aside and maybe start to pick up some other splatter glass because I think a lot of these, you know, three or five of them might do really well on eBay. This one I got for $2.50, which I think is a nice deal. They had such an eclectic selection in this booth. They had glass and brass and all kinds of cool stuff. This piece was neat, but in looking it up, I found it's only worth about six to eight dollars. And that one had it a, a little replacement uh, piece in it that made it uh, not so desirable. You want to find like the original brass screws and 
things, but somebody fixed that one up and I'm glad. Up, oh, Earth's looking up the Weeble Wobbles. <laughs> and it looks like they can have some value. Here's some solds. Ah, oh, he needs a new phone cover so bad. I'm seeing how bad his looks. But we did pick these up. I'll probably take them over to the booth. I'm not going to show them to you, but they're probably worth somewhere between five and ten dollars a piece. And somebody will enjoy finding them over at our booth. They had such neat things in here, and it was getting a little later in the day, so I wasn't willing to, you know, stop and look everything up. Now this was such a cool idea. They used this chicken wire with some clothespins to display some smalls. And I love miniatures, I love smalls, so I'm seeing some things that I think are super cute and it's 75 cents a piece. I'm gonna pick a few of these things up, whether I sell them or put them into my collection. I'm not gonna pass up on these. These piggies are cute. I'm gonna grab them. I saw a little dancing couple over there. These guys are kind of plain. I'm wondering if these were play pieces or where they came out of. They had original price tags on them, like here you see. Um, I, I don't know, but I like them. What a fun way to sell little things on those little clips. I picked up a few things and maybe I should have grabbed all of these. I'm not exactly sure what they are, but I think they're so cute. These guys are like little dancing. She looks like she's doing a little cha-cha-cha, right? <laughs> and so does he. Super cute. I don't know, I didn't check to see if they're magnets, but maybe they all went into something because these guys were pigs, but they're built the same way. They're built out of the same material. I don't know, maybe I should have grabbed them all. Maybe I'm regretting not grabbing them all, especially since they were 75 cents a set, which was a really great price. I just grabbed the ones that I thought I liked the best. Maybe I should have grabbed them all, I don't know. But yeah, they have little vintage Japan stickers in there. And uh, these will probably go into my miniature collection, but I should have grabbed them all. <laughs> and then these guys I thought were adorable. Uh, it turns out these are French knitters. So you use these metal pieces up here with some yarn and you can create like a thick, kind of braided rope out of them. They, the rope actually comes out the bottom. Um, I watched a tutorial on YouTube to figure out what exactly they were. I just thought they were neat and they definitely had a cool vintage look. And I thought they would look really cool even just in a vignette or in a, like a tiered tray or in your decor because they just had that kind of cool look. And I knew I'd seen them before, but I wasn't sure what they were. Um, but for $1.25 for the two, I thought that was a good deal, and so I grabbed them. I think they're missing a piece. You need like a little pointed, um, it's like a thick toothpick that I think usually sits down inside of them. But you can use anything with a pointed tip um, to do the work. So, um, yeah, I thought they were cute. So I picked them up. And that all came out of that one booth. Um, so I only really bought from three booths. And my favorite, of course, <laughs> was this booth. Um, I spent $30 there, but I feel like I'm probably gonna get all of that back and more here. And this piece may be a fight <laughs> to keep, it's a big piece. It's gonna take up a lot of shelf space. Um, but my sister has a big area I feel like this might fit up in her collection a little bit better. Um, so I might have to duke it out with her. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a really nice place to stop and shop. We had a good time there. And I will give you the information again. You should go check it out if you're in the area. 
All right, everybody, that is it. That was the whole adventure for tonight. Stick around this week. I will be recording next a 10 item drop auction, or as we are now calling them, the unlive sale. <laughs> so that's coming up tomorrow night. And then Thursday night, we are still gonna be in the Pittsburgh area, checking out some of their thrift stores, and I will take you along and show you what I found. So be sure to stick around. Um, speaking of sticking around, if you are still here at this point, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. If you're still here and you have not yet subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Please do that and hit that little alarm button. Um, set it to all so you know when I put up a new video, which happens a couple of times a week at least. And then do me a favor while you're clicking around, hit a like or a dislike. And then down in the comments below, leave me a message. Say hello or tell me what you saw that you loved. Tell me if you live near Pittsburgh and you have been to these places. Um, tell me anything. I love to talk to you and I always respond. The best thing you can do for the channel is share me out. Share this video with somebody. Tell them that you're watching some crazy chick who likes to share information, take you thrifting, all those things. All right, everyone. So until tomorrow or Thursday or whenever I see you next, please take care and I will see you then.